Uh, she and Abbott Kinney, the guy that started uh, Venice Beach, that built all the canals and you know bought that land and, and tried to develop that into something, originally came up here and saw the the, the you know the, the, the possibility of being able to put a dam here and the fact there's a convergence of two creeks and several springs that feed into it. And uh, well, that was you know pretty early on. Then later on, what wound up happening was uh, a couple other individuals wound up uh, purchasing the rights from all the people that bought the land around the place here and uh, built the, the dam. The dam was literally the tallest concrete and masonry dam built in the world at the time. And let me tell you, I've been behind it. It leaks like a sieve, you know. That, that thing is old and, you know, there's water running out all over the place. Uh, the lake is way up right now. It's uh, It was uh, so, so low that the DFG didn't even want to stock fish in it for a while there. Uh, it's a neat spot. Uh, it's my home. I missed putting the plaque here. That was a big bummer, but you guys enjoy and I'm gonna hand the mic off here <laughs> Stand up Cass yep. That's when it was made taller. And they built, yeah, they took it. It was 110 yeah. feet at the start, then the water, the water went over it, so they built it up 12 and a half feet, which that, that made it the world's largest masonry dam in the world, the tallest masonry dam in the world. The only masonry. And then, and then in later years, it overflowed again, so they built it up uh, 12 and a half more feet, so it's 100 and. They quarried the stones. We, we were down there no? pre running. The, they quarried the stones right there with them. They even picked up the ground. Okay, you guys doing it. You guys, yeah, that's the thing. They're not hewn stones. It's just like someone made a block wall. But the rocks are from the five feet down. Yeah, that's the thing. They were hewn out of the rocks. 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 They Gee, Dwarf. Steve, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cass is up. Now. Cass is the resident expert of Kenworthy. And I forgot to say, Martin, he's, he's instrumental in getting us in. Okay, he, he was the contact that got us in here. Anyway, I'm sure you guys have. Uh, oh, I've got to stand on the floor. Stand up, Cass. What if I fall? Stand up. Just trust us. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm glad we do have a microphone. I lost my voice last week. I need one. You guys saw the plaque out there to, uh, erected for Kenworthy. Kenworthy is actually um, off in the tree somewhere. There's it's a housing there's a housing track now, so you really can't see it. But it was uh, Kenworthy was one of the greatest uh, mining frauds perpetrated in Southern California. This guy uh, Harold Kenworthy came from England. He had more money and sense. Huh. And he came out here in the late 1800s and wanted to get on get in on the gold rush. So he uh, came out here, and some of the people took some. Uh, gold dust and put it in a shotgun and blew it in the side of the hill. <laughs> That's awesome. He went out and dug it up. And he had an assay. And, hey, it was good. So he actually, uh, he lasted about two years. He actually built a mill, a hotel, a store, and there was a school out here. And uh, it took it took him about two years before he uh, realized he got quacked. And everybody else was <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank, but he never, he had the mine up there, but he never, uh, Never realized anything from it, and then he just re he realized that it was a bust, so he just kind of slunk off in the sunset. And the last last anybody heard from him, he went up to Canada. The uh, the boards and whatever from the town site, they took it down. And they used it to build a keen camp up there. He saw a when he came over the pass, so that that's where all the uh, lumber went from the uh, from the town. Actually, I've seen some pictures, and it was a uh, Pretty thriving town for about two years until he got quacked. And one of the structures of the museum is built lumber from Kenworthy too. Wow. <laughs> the Corona, yeah. Corona. Corona. Another, uh, I don't know if Mike talked about it, but another interesting thing uh, about this area, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Dr. Timothy Leary. Yeah. Hey. He actually. Uh, Goofy stamps. 
yeah, way out. Yeah, he lived up there on a ranch for oh, about a year and a half. Way high up. Way yeah, he was way high. <laughs> way up. But yeah, he way high. But he was. Uh, yeah, he, he stayed out there for a while on a bunch of other oddballs. Um, that's about all I have to say about Kenwood. Does anybody have any questions that I can't answer? Good. Oh, okay. Penguins have me. I don't know. I, I, you know, I have to Google that. That's another good one. Another good one. Anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, When's the summer brother solstice? of sobriety with the rains. We don't want anybody to get popped. And, yeah, have a good day. Disperse. Yeah, guys, read it with the uh, what the Cass said. Uh, we're going to be out on public highways. The rules of the road apply. Uh, a lot of you guys are going to be drinking with a beer between your knees. You know, go for it. But there's uh, don't think it because you're up in the mountains that there are no sheriffs or the highway patrol around. They're thick as mud up here. So watch your ass. Be careful. Yeah, so Scooter, he can save you from a lot of trouble, but not all trouble, so, so be careful. Okay, so uh, this place here where you're at right now, that's the San Jacinto Mountains over there, uh, off in the distance. And this is, uh, now this is called Garner Valley. It used to be Thomas Valley. Uh, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Mr. Thomas, uh, Mr. Thomas uh, uh, was born in New York in, uh, in the 1830s. He came west, gold rush days. Uh, he uh, floated around here and then uh, uh, found out about this nice pasture land up here, up in the mountains. Uh, this is the uh, Kawea, uh Indian country up here. And uh, he, uh, instead of just moving in and taking over like the white men were doing about that time, the, the Mexican period's over and all the land grants, you know, it's like you go to the big tree with the broken branch and then you go over to the pile of rocks. Well, when the Americans come, they, they get people to subvert those and, and the Americans start grabbing up all the land. But he, he actually made arrangements with the Cahuilla who lived here and uh, he was, he, he was on good terms with them all the time that he was up here. Uh, like uh, Martin said, the Ramona pageant, the, the book Ramona, which I read about a week before I came. I never had ever read it. Uh, but in the, in the book, it's Alessandro. His name was Juan Diego, and he was a Cahuilla that worked for Mr. Thomas. And then Ramona was Ramona Lugo, who also worked here at the ranch. Uh, so that story is, is the, the it's, it's, you know, it's all doctored up. But the basic facts of it, you know, is right around in this area right here. So Mr. Thomas, he, this is Thomas Mountain back here, named after him. Uh, when you saw up the road up there, Herky Creek, if you came in that way, uh, that's Herky Creek because uh, the grizzle bear got Mr. Herky when he was down at the creek. And uh, he managed to get his way back to the ranch, but uh, he died a couple of days later. Uh, this over here, this is the ranch house for... Uh, for Garner Ranch right now, which was also where the Thomas Ranch headquarters were. Uh, right around the turn of the last century, uh, he'd, uh, he'd been here for 30 years or something and he wanted to, he decided to sell out. Uh, the first person who was gonna buy it was Mr. Kenworthy, but unfortunately Mr. Kenworthy was broke, so he, he, he wasn't able to sell it. <laughs> yeah. And so in 1905, he sold it to a guy named Garner, and Garner was a butcher and a, uh, uh, like ran a meat market and he, he grew his own cattle and everything like that and so he bought it out from him at one time this was a this uh, the ranch holdings were uh, about 15 square miles and part of the time the Las Flores Rancho in Summit Valley which is where the very first Billy Holcomb plaque is they oh, owned, wow. that, that was owned that was part of this ranch operation at one time for a short time so uh, the Thomas family, excuse me, the, the Garner family still owns the ranch today and they still run it and they still raise cattle just like in the olden days. And all these families that you'll see, you'll, you'll hear about the Hamiltons and the Trips and all of these family names. They, these people still live around, around here, the museum. If any of you hiked at um, uh, San Jacinto, to, to San Jacinto Peak, up there, they got a place. They got Wellman's Cienega and Wellman's Divide at the museum. The lady's name is Wellman. She's part of the Wellman family. That was uh, summer rains for the cattle from from down here. Sometimes they would take them up uh, up like 8,000 feet up in the mountains during the summer when there's no graze. So. 
Yo. Which? Juan Diego Flats. We, Clampers has a plaque. Billy Holcomb has a plaque there at Juan Diego Flats. That's where uh, uh, Juan Diego, who's Alessandro in the play and in the book, he was supposedly not quite right in his head. And people would, you know, sometimes they would just, there was horses, so many horses that you could, you could, you could take your horse and leave it and switch it for the other guy's horse. Everybody knew everybody and you could kind of do it that way. He, he did that, he took a horse, but he left his horse. And so they uh, went and shot him for a horse thief, even though he had left his, his own uh, horse behind there. So there's a Billy Holcomb plaque there. It's one of, from the old era, from, it's before my time. You'll see it at the Bergman grave. The plaque is about, it's about 16 inches square. And it's got about 30 words on it. Because words cost money and bronze cost money. And at that time, <laughs> You, the plaques were little, and it's just a, a, some rocks plastered up. It'll be you'll see that at the Bergman graves later on today. What a what a 70s plaque was compared to what it is now. Okay. All right. So let Tim and his guys go, and all. Like I said, your map tells you where you're going. Uh, he's going to be out there waving you in. The next place we're going to stop is at the Little Red Schoolhouse. There's a big field. All of your cars can all get in there. You can, the guy told me at the museum, if you got to have a beer, you can drink a beer in the field there, but don't bring a beer over to the museum. Uh, they, don't, they don't care if you drink out in the field out there. At the Hamilton Museum, they don't want any, they don't want anybody, they don't want any alcohol in there. So please respect that when we get down there. So there's two stops. We're going to go to the Little Red Schoolhouse, and then we're going to go about a mile down the road to the Hamilton Museum. Hey, man. Satisfactory. Satisfactory.